morning sweeties so here's the video that i promised that will explain how i'm doing excel mirroring in fabric so first of all um the documentation so have a read of the documentation and i did and some of it is don't worry some of it is a little bit confusing it takes a little while to get into um but trying to understand what open mirroring is or a mirror database i think is key and what it's going to do for you and what it doesn't do for you so read the documentation first part um cool and i don't think we have enough demos for you to uh, or samples for you to, to to build it yourself which is why i will put the scripts up online eventually when i've tidied them up because it's all proof of concept it's all it's all very hung together you know it's all just knocked together very quickly okay so what is open mirroring so it's really really high level and how does it compare with these other mirroring so in these other mirroring where i've got sql db managed instance cosmos um all you do is you just connect to a source system a specific source system you get a little wizard you add some connection details how you're going to connect to it and then it manages everything in open mirroring you don't get that bit you do that bit and Microsoft, the mirroring bit, does the second part. So, all right, so let me just explain. So how I kind of think of it, I think of it like this. Um, it's, this is the underpant gnome, is it, right? We've got open mirroring, then there's something we need to do. We're not quite sure, but we get profit at the end. So yeah, we get a mirror database, we get, we get all those delta tables, we can query them, we can build reports. So that's where we're here. Uh, but this is this middle bit, which is what we're trying to explain. So this is how I've kind of put it together very quickly. So this is what you need to do. And this is what Microsoft is going to do. So this is what Fabric is going to do, not Microsoft. Let's actually change that to be Fabric. There we go. Live editing in a video is not, not great. OK, so what you need to do is you create a mirror database and you get something called a landing zone and you need that. That's where you're going to put your files. But what files are gonna, am I going to put? You are responsible for scanning the source system, whatever it is. So it could be file system for Excel, or it could be a database, um, Oracle, SQL, whatever. You are scanning that and picking up if there is a change. You're responsible for that. So you have to write some code or some sort of system or something, some script that does that. You will then read that for the updates and see if there's any changes. If there are any changes, you have to write that out to a parquet file in a sort of specific format with um, the first, I don't think it has to be the first column, but you need a row marker in there that says this is what the action is, this is a new car, this is a new row, this is a deleted row, this is an updated row. And once you've done that, you've written all the changes in to this parquet file, you copy that parquet file up to the landing zone. And then from there, Fabric then takes over. Fabric then converts that essentially change feed that you have had to create. So that's what you're creating here as part of this. Then you create that change feed, you pass it off to Fabric, you push it into the landing zone. And once you push it into the landing zone, Fabric then takes over. Fabric creates a delta table for you to then query, read, do everything that you would do just normally in mirroring. You can create shortcuts to it. You can build reports off it. You can, you know, you can share it with other workspaces, with other users and so this is why so in like normal mirroring fabric effectively is doing it all you're doing all the configuration but in open mirroring you are doing the you are um, in a mirror database you are responsible for this and so this is what i've written a bit of dotnet code to do so right let's go and jump into that um now you can use powershell it doesn't have to be dotnet any language of your choice all right let's go so um, this is the beginning of the .NET code. So essentially, I've added a new secret feature. Yeah, I'll show you this. Um, someone else wanted, um, well, if you can do Excel, can you do CSV? Of course, I can do CSV. Took about mm, took about 30 minutes to add that. Uh, something called a file watcher. So essentially, I'm watching for changes in a file system. And then when there is a change in a file system, then I am then going to read that change. So I've got a process called scan. And if it's an CSV file, then I read that CSV file and I convert it into an internal structure of a data table. Then I get the um, file name that I need to produce. So you need to produce a very specific file name. 
it's it's zero 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 one for the first one and then it's zero 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 two etc and i'll show you that um then once you've created that you create a a special json file which says this is what the key for this table is this delta table that i want you to create and that's key so that's how you know how to do an update if you don't have that you can't do updates in fact i think today you know that it doesn't work it just gives you an error so once i've got that i then write that the changes that i've got that i've got here from my csv and in this case it's the entire csv file and then i then write it out to a parquet file and then i copy that parquet file up to the the, the landing zone and then the rest of mirroring fabric takes over and it's pretty much the same logic for a excel document um, i'm getting the information i'm opening up i'm using this um cool little a library that that goes through the excel for me it goes through all the worksheets i don't have to you can see i'm adding the row marker here i'm adding an id onto it so i'm adding some extra information that i'm putting in and then essentially it's just looping through it and then and then pushing it out and that's it um uh, I'm, I'm cheating a little bit i'm using a bit of powershell i'm actually using az copy to copy the files up to the landing zone um and and it's it's as simple as that um I've got some code, generic code that writes the file out to, writes that delta table, uh, delta table, sorry, the data table out to Parquet. Um, and so there's not a lot of code in here, to be fair. That's one for CSV. Um, so it's not very big. So I will put it up once I get rid of any spending mistakes and I sort out any sort of major bugs. But let's go and run it and I'll show you what it's doing step by step. Okay, so this is the output. So this is quite useful because I put a lot of logging in just so I can see what's happening. So what this is doing is this is now scanning that folder for changes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, here, bring across. So I'm going to do all this sort of in real time. So there might be a few delays and I might pad for a bit. So I'm going to copy my um, spreadsheet and a CSV file over. So from my sample into my mirroring. So essentially, I'm watching this folder for changes. And you can see it's picked up on them. It's doing some processing, it's reading them, and it's writing out a parquet file. That's actually what I had, didn't show people in the video. It says actually a secret folder here called temp. And this is where it's writing all the local copies. So you can actually see that that's, this is the CSV file, and this is the Excel file. And so I can see, and this is what it's going to push up into Fabric. And actually, it's doing it now. So the AZ copy is running. You can see. So in fact, I could just look at Friends. If I look at that folder there, and then I open up the CSV file. So that's in there, going to mirroring. So let's go and make a change. Oh, okay, and I'll show you while that's opening up. I'll show you this. So, this is Azure Storage Explorer. And this is my landing zone. And you can see these are the tables here. This is the stuff it just copied up. For example, Jeff. Um, in fact, you can, one of, the, one of the cool things about it, if I show you this, uh, which one? This is Friends. Uh, you can do preview. This is so good. Get rid of all those junk coins. I I can see just preview this. So you can see there's a row marker. There's the ID column that I've added in. This is all the parquet file that I've generated. Okay, so you can just see that that's what happens here. It's copied up to the landing zone. When those changes get copied up to the landing zone, this is where mirroring takes over. And then when I'm here, I can go into, oh, I didn't show you how to create a mirrored um, database. First thing you do, you create a mirrored database. So you'll see that the feature is called open mirroring. Right, nothing called open there. So you have to create mirrored database. You just give it a name and that's it. Don't need to give it anything else. 
you get your landing zone here, and this is where I'm copying up those files. Okay, oh, all right, I didn't even start it. Let's start the replication. All right, that's, that's a really bad thing not to do. So that's starting the replication, and that will start pulling in those, those files. It will look for those files. It will find them in the landing zone, and then it will start building delta tables from it. So it sometimes takes a little bit of time for it to sort of update. So while that's going on in there, so this is all happening sort of behind the scenes to you and the user. So when the user is just looking at it, they've just opened up an Excel document. So let's open this up. Um, and let's go back to here. Let's go back to here. Let's go back to temp. Let's go back to the microphones. Right. So we're at version six. So let's go in here. Let's add in. Okay, so this was actually Chris Webb's idea. Chris Webb. Um, He's a real boy. Um, he, it was, we were talking a long time ago about mirroring, about what would be a great source, and he said Excel. So I'm going to put his age in as 21. I don't want to embarrass him or or, or make him feel bad about how old he is. Um, legs, I think he's definitely got two legs. Last time I saw him, and he's definitely got two eyes. And then I save that. And you'll see that now it's picked up on a change. So that's my file watcher. So that's the code that I've written. It's reading the Excel document, getting the data out, it's writing to Parquet. It's then going to copy that Parquet up to the landing zone. And then, and then the rest of mirroring takes over. So if we go over here, we should see that Demo Friends and Jeff. And if we then go over to here, six nine point. Make sure it's updated. So we can see demo friends. And so this is a CSV file that I added in support for. Oh, so annoying. There we go. There we go. Cool. All right. So this is the contents of that CSV file. And I can go into here. I can go into my folder. Let's go into my mirroring folder. Let's open this up. Demo 100, 101, 102. And then if I sit back here, I save it. The file watcher is doing its job. It's picked up. There was a change. It's now going to read that CSV file. It's now going to up, create a new Parquet file, a new version for it. And then it's going to upload it into um, the, the, the landing zone, which is... So that should be, in fact, if we can copy, we can actually work out. So it's done four. So it's just written five. Um, so we should also be able to see in our landing zone. Um, where are you landing zone? Um, yeah. Five. And then mirroring takes over. So once you've found all your changes, you've pushed it up in the right format, in the right file name. That's it. That's So there's no real secret, there's no magic. It's just that dot, little .NET app that I wrote that's doing the scanning. And we can see, look, Chris Webb, he is a real boy. And uh, I don't know if I showed this on the previous one, but I'm just going to come in here. So this is a lake house I previously created. Um, just to prove you can do it, new shortcuts. We go to my lake, my mirror database. Here are those tables. They're just normal dog tables in fabric at this point. And everything that you can do normally in fabric, share them out. 
set permissions on them. It's just exactly as you would expect. So just wait for that to appear. Obviously, it's got to start the Spark cluster. So that's going to take a few seconds. There we go. Okay. So really, that's it. Um, that is open mirroring. It's really pretty simple. Let's go back just to recap. So, so what you need to do is you create the mirror database. You need to write some code or some logic to scan the source for the changes. This is what I've done for Excel and for CSV. Read the updates, write to a parquet file, copy it to landing that, and then mirroring, the rest of mirroring takes over and Fabric does the rest, converts those change files into Delta. And it's pretty simple, as you can see. Uh, and actually, it didn't take me very long to write. So thank you for your time, and I'll see you on the next video. And bye, and love you.